Good afternoon. Vision, the Economic Times, Vision Conclave, UP's roadmap towards a $1 trillion economy, 2027, has been on the center stage for, for a while. And I would first, right away, congratulate Economic Times and the entire team of Economic Times, RPG and everyone else, for having picked up this topic and getting all the eminent speakers here today on the stage. So congratulations ET and the entire team of ET and all your partners for having called us here on this big topic that we need to take forward. Well, I have been told that, well, the inaugural session for the conclave was very eventful. The Honorable Ministers spoke at large and I am I am supposed to give you a general vision on sustainable business environment for industrial infrastructure investment and a responsive policy framework. Well, I would just like to give you a background regarding Uttar Pradesh from my own perspective. And that background is that if every arm of the government takes up this entire issue of development for the state forward, if every officer of the government, if every ministry of the government under the leadership of the Chief Minister and with the full participation of the Government of India gets going, I think there is no reason why the state cannot move forward. And I feel that the team which works to take the state forward needs to not only get the entire governance machinery forward, the entire industry bodies together, all and everyone within the state on the same platform, and ultimately lead to the last technical person on the ground who is partner to the progress of the state. So what I feel is that in the five years that the Honorable Chief Minister from 2017 to 2022 has brought forth changes within the state, the government of UP, the way it has brought changes within the state, the government of UP, the way it has led to a situation where the state government has now come to a position where we can say that in the ease of doing business, we are, one, uh, we are one of the states which is at the top. And finally, if we say, see what is the background for the state, dwell in terms of law and order, in terms of a general uh, environment of positivity and flexibility, it is that which is required to take forward the state. We, in the five years that were uh, very eventful, we could see that slowly and gradually the obstacles to development were taken, taken up, things were improved and results were formulated on the ground. It is after this Yogi 1.0, it, uh, it is now this vision of Yogi 2.0 of taking the state from a $0.279 trillion economy to a $1 trillion economy in the ne next five years. It is this challenge that we are now discussing here today. Obviously, I have just seen the draft of what the state government's partner Deloitte has uh, put forth before the government in terms of the vision for the $1 trillion economy. I would like to give my point of views on the sustainable business environment for industrial infrastructure investment and a responsible policy framework. Right now, as you all know, as probably earlier speakers of the state government and the ministers would have already put before, th before you, we have a very mixed audience here. We have some, some people who are in the banks, senior officers from the banks, the financial institutions, people from the industry, people from uh, industry organizations, our friends in the 
economic side of the media, our friends who are actually working on the ground. What I would like to state right away is that the investment climate of the state depends firstly on the right policies to be on the ground. And it is here where the state government has actually brought forth almost every policy possible, including the industrial policy, including the tourism policy, including the biofuel policy, including the solar policy, including the textile policies, all of these policies on the ground. So I would like to first of all state that the first challenge before the state is to bring these policies in the public domain and it is here that one will need to educate people all over the world, not just in India but abroad of what policies are there in the state. Now this is the basic challenge before the state and this is where the selling of the state in the sense how to promote the state re is required to be done. This environment to promote the state has already been planned. The state government is planning a large number of road shows, not just in India, but abroad. And it is the honorable ministers who are going to lead the road shows all across the world, uh, right up to the Americas, to Europe, to, uh, to Singapore, to, to the Middle East, to, to all other countries which, are, uh, which could be potential partners for the progress. So the first thing which is required to be done is of course to bring about the policies and I am so very happy uh, being part of the government that well almost all policies are there on the ground and if you compare the policies they would be one of the best in the country. I have been involved with the defense and aerospace policy and I can say for sure there was a session going on parallelly on defense and aerospace and I am so very happy that where UP which had absolutely almost zero investment in the private sector in defense, very old investments in the defense sector in terms of the ordnance factories in Kanpur and other areas. It is now that UP is now being seen as the uh, leader, as one of the states which is going forward in a, in a pace which obviously is a good pace and this is where we need to work hard. You all know that the BrahMos missile program is to be, uh, the, the entire thing has to come up in Lucknow, the defense minister had laid the inauguration stone for that. This project is there coming in Lucknow. Uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the BDL project, the Bharat Dynamics Limited project for the missile uh, vehicles and other uh, inputs have to come up in Jhansi. And other projects in Kanpur, maybe an ammunition park in Kanpur, all of this, these need to come up. So this was all a result of what policies we, were, we had which came on the ground. So the very first thing which is important is policy. Once you have policy, you obviously have to have people interested to come forth in this area. And this is where the financing of these new projects is very important. I have worked in the government where the largest project of the state, the Ganga Expressway got financed. Obviously, financing of projects require uh, whole series of uh, background work which needs to be done by the organizations which are promoting the investment and this is where I would like to state that the basic thing for taking projects forward is to ensure that there is land available for the project. No project of any sort, whether it's in infrastructure like roads or whether it's infrastructure like airports or whether it's in infrastructure like the defense production, whether it's in the infrastructure like a steel mill, or whether it's in infrastructure like IT or data centers can happen for, uh, without a land bank available. And this is where we in the state of UP have started a huge process of getting land available for the state projects, and this is where a lot of work needs to be done. A preliminary estimate of the land available with the state government states that if we need to reach the $1 trillion economy, this land which is already available has to be almost trebled or maybe it has to be multiplied by four times. And this is going to be the task before the government to take forward the availability of land for projects along the, uh, around the state. I can give you an example. We worked on this uh, aspect. The Honorable Chief Minister wanted us to work on providing land for projects along the expressways. 
And this is where we got our consultants in place and the two expressways, the Purvanchal Expressway and the Bundelkhand Expressway, we identified land along each of the uh, expressways in each of the districts. And it is there where the farmers were taken forth, uh, they were brought into confidence so that this land from the farmers could come easily on paying of the, uh, uh, the, the uh, compensation which is to be given to them in a way, fair and transparent manner. So this is where the entire work of the government is cut out, where they have to work very, ha uh, very hard to ensure that the land bank is there. Once the land bank is there, the second aspect for any sustainable development is the allotment of that land to a private sector uh, uh, entity or to a public sector entity. The allotment of land has to be done in a transparent manner. We work in an environment where transparency is possible. It is here again, the challenge lies in our systems to ensure that land is made available for industry, for logistics, for infrastructure, or maybe for uh, education projects, for housing projects, for rural housing projects, for rural infrastructure. So all of this is going to be a challenge for us. And it is here, the allotment policies of the state government are important. Once the land is there, once you have, a, uh, have a, uh, an organization which wants to invest, once an organization is able to get land for itself, it is then that the major work starts of formulating a project. A formulation of projects is where I feel, having worked in the government for so long, it is here that we as a nation need to work harder. It is here where we need to get some of the best consultants on board and it is here that we need to ensure that what we are getting it uh, for our, ourselves as a project report is something which can be executable, something which is doable, something which will lead to value addition. I have a feeling and I have worked with any number of consultants on big projects. If and if a private sector company or a government sector company is able to select the right consultant and within the right consultancy, the right people to provide within that group the inputs for making a proper DPR, that is where the major challenge lies for almost all the projects. How the DPR is to be formulated, how the government policy has to match with the DPR, uh, in what fashion will you implement it, how will you ensure that the raw materials are available on the ground, how will you ensure that the land which is made available is utilized to the maximum. How will you ensure that all the clearances that you require, say, for the uh, environment clearance, all of these are challenges. It is here I feel that the entire project profile requires a lot of uh, leadership uh, from the people who are promoting these projects to take things forward. Once you have a DPR in place, obviously, you now need the finances to come in place. And I can assure you, I mean, given the uh, experience I have on large projects in the state, the commercial banks, the private sector banks, all of them, I mean, you would not agree to this, but they are flush with funds. And in the last four and five years, we in the expressways could get about 29,000, 30,000 crores worth of funds uh, for our expressways through the banks through a very simple mechanism of taking forth our projects to them and working with them. It is here where I feel that the Indian banks, the private sector banks and the commercial banks have sufficient funds available still and UP which has a, a credit deposit ratio of hardly 41 to 45 percent. We still need to push forth if we have to get a $1 trillion uh, dollar economy from a CD ratio of 45% to at least 90% because some of these states which are doing well have a CD ratio of 90 to 110% which means that we have to retain the credit available within the state to take the things forward within the state and it's our financial institutions which are ready to take it up. I will like to name two banks of which senior officials met me only about four few days ago, the Punjab National Bank, the Indian Bank where they wanted good projects to be taken up within the state and they were looking for some advice from me of how to go about getting good projects for themselves. Because their feeling was 
uh, at the general manager level that projects, big projects which come get funded from Mumbai or Delhi while UP per se as headquartered in Lucknow is not able to propose good projects and this is where I feel that if proper uh, follow up is done with the banks, a proper financing network can be taken up. Second, uh, the next point which is more important now, once you have the financing in place, once you have uh, your uh, project starting in place, timely management of projects. I have during the COVID period managed two big, three big projects on the ground and I feel that well the ma top management of most companies do not put so much on the ground in terms of time management with the workers which is required to be done. I have seen large companies sublet their uh, projects to smaller companies for smaller construction groups and these subletted uh, organizations are the ones which don't have a proper structure and it is then that the large companies suffer because once they have sublet to a smaller organization it leads to a lot of confusion. These smaller organizations should be very properly selected and they should actually do work on the ground in the way you want to do work. It is here where a lot of technology, where a lot of monitoring systems can be brought in place, where work which is done exactly on the ground can be monitored by the top management of the company because technology allows you to do it. So this is where a lot of uh, effort needs to be done in the Indian sector. I have seen projects where the road projects were uh, given to a large contractor. They have been then subletted to a smaller contractor. It's the smaller contractor who face financial difficulties and ultimately the project is stuck. So it is again here that well, when large companies come into the market with a bit good project, the subcontractors should be properly selected so that things are taken forth. And unless and until you get good organizations to do your work for you, it is not sustainable to ensure that the business environment that in which you are working in will really be positive towards you. Projects once completed obviously require a lot of marketing. It is another, uh, it, I would say this, that India has a lot of talent on marketing. A lot of talent comes into marketing area. I am not very, uh, I, I, I would say that I am not so very trained to uh, give you an, uh, uh, give you a, uh, a detailed input on how to go about marketing. But we in India have large organizations, large uh, educational institutions where I would always recommend that if you want to take up marketing, either you take up a very strong uh, body which has already done and proved itself or take some very young people who can bring fresh ideas into the system to take your marketing forward. So what I would finally like to say is that, well, projects, taking forth, creating a business environment, all of this within UP, having played a part a small part in bringing the largest project of the state definitely is a possibility. I can tell you a project of the size of the Ganga Expressway could not have been possible unless the Honorable CM, his vision when he launched this in Kumbh was there and then his effort to ensure that a project of this size actually comes on, <coughs> actually comes on ground is ensured to be done. And we in, in the state now obviously are working on the $1 trillion economy. We are all going to be part of that entire exercise. I am sure with the economic times, with a large number of people from the press, a large number of experts from the various areas, large number of experts from the financial institutions, I feel that UP has now come to the center stage of the entire development of the country. And we, under the leadership of the Chief Minister, under the benign uh, support of the Government of India under the Prime Minister will take our state forward. I will give you a very small example that, well, you must have been to uh, Varanasi, the Kashi Vishnath uh, uh, Mandir uh, project you would have seen. The entire project costed 900 crores. And if you uh, see the cost-benefit analysis of a project of a 900 crore size, you would find that the type of tourist the type of uh, uh, religious uh, tourism which is happening in Varanasi, in three months, I can make a calculation that uh, hotel bookings which 
ensure that a GST is paid at 18% or 27%, that amount in three months will be equivalent to a project of the nature of 900 crores. So we have to look for good projects to take forward. We have to may ensure that our profitability is on the positive side. We in UP think positively under our Chief Minister and I am sure this conference here today will be a step forward in that direction. Thank you for inviting me and thank you very much.